Hi, my name is Roberto Serini. I'm a photographer based out of New York City and Milan, Italy. In this tutorial, I want to show you my techniques for editing interior real estate photos. And we're going to keep this tutorial all within Lightroom. So here's the photo we're going to use. The first step that I do is remove chromatic aberration, enable profile correction. And usually Lightroom will automatically detect the, the camera and the lens you used and provide the correct adjustments. Now, one important thing when I photograph, I always use tripods for a tripod for interior for in, in real estate photos. And one of the things I always try to do is make sure that I get a vertical, that my vertical lines are vertical. So here we're not perfect, but close enough. We need to just rotate a little bit and we should be good right there. Then the other thing I like to do in Lightroom after that is I go to transformation and we, you always get some distortion from distortion from the lens. So let's see if we can improve on that. So that's done. Now constraint crop and we're going to take and we're going to make sure that our vertical lines I'm looking like right in this area. There we go. I think we are very close to perfect. Let's see, eh, maybe a little bit more. Now I'm looking at the nightstand next to the bed. Let's see. Okay, went too far. Okay, there we go. How does that look? That looks pretty good. I think we need to rotate just a little bit more now that we have done that. Let's see. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next step we're going to do is adjust the white balance. Now I usually use the picker up here and start picking around the room until I get close to what I think is the correct white balance. Now many times I use a check card that I photograph in the room which will use, will, I can use later to get my colors perfect. Um, I don't always do that like in this case I didn't I didn't feel like it was necessary after this I am going to play a little bit with the white balance I'd rather make it a little I'll cool it down a little bit and then we'll use the colors in the room the the like the the vases and the rug to to give pops of color so I'm going to take the shadows and bring them up almost yeah let's go all the way and my highlights i'm going to bring them down a little bit now if you hold the hold the alt or option key on your keyboard and start dragging the white slider to the right or left well to the right I, for the white it'll show you when you start clipping and i usually try not to go too far into the clipping i don't mind it here because it's the reflections from the windows and the same thing with the black so this one is already clip it's clipping at the refrigerator i'm okay with that now i we've lost contrast when we went up with the shadow so let's see if we can recover that by bringing up our contrast slider yeah i like that so next i'm going to bump up the the vibrance the vibrance as we mentioned earlier as I mentioned earlier, I like to try to get some of the color to come in from the glasses, the vases, the rug. I like that. I usually don't do much with saturation. Let's see, because saturation, it's a little too much, in my opinion. You can play with it, but I try to stay on, if I do use saturation, stay fairly low on the numbers. I'd rather use vibrance. Okay, next, I'm going to bump up the clarity a little bit. Not too much, because it will create a really weird look but just a little bit. Now with that, clarity also adds a little bit of contrast. At least that's what it always looks like to me. So I'm gonna turn down the contrast here because I don't think we, well, let's see here. Yeah, I, I think I like that. Now I'm gonna bump up exposure. So I do want it to be a little bit brighter. Now that's too much. Let's see about. I'd say about right there. 
Now, one of the things I usually do is I, I will have all the lights on and off. I'll take two shots so that then I can decide if I want to paint in Photoshop, if I, if I want to paint the light in or out. Now, in this case, I picked the one, one that I didn't have the lights on, so I can show you actually a technique in Lightroom that I found. So we can go to the brush tool up here on the top right. Uh, if you hold the Alt or Option key, and I'm going to reset it. So I'm going to bump up the exposure. Then we're going to have fairly soft brush. Oh, let's see, flow 73%. Let's try with that. And then I'm going to start painting in what a light bulb will look like right there. So I'm going to start with basically what the actual light bulb feel. So let's go smaller brush and I'm using my brackets, left and right bracket to reduce and increase the size of my brush. Same there, same there. And I usually create multiple brushes so that I have separate controls. Like right now I'm doing these desk lamps and I'm going to, I'm using the same brush. I won't use the same brush for the ceiling lights and these lights are hanging from the ceiling here in the kitchen. So we've, we've done these four. Now I'm going to close my brush. I'm going to create a new brush and I'm going to reduce the exposure a little bit, make it a much bigger, Brush, not much bigger, but a bigger brush, and I'm going to create a little glow around those lights. Remembering that, you know, in real life, the light would spill a little bit from the top onto the wall. That's a little too much, so let me undo that. So we are going to turn down the flow and the density do that again i'd rather add a little bit at a time than just be very very heavy-handed there we go that's more realistic now you can also if you want to you can increase say the yellow you know go towards the yellow and the temperature to give it more of a yellow glow yeah, I actually like that. I think it adds a little bit more realism to the to the lights. So that let's see here. Yep, yeah, I like those. So let's close. Now we'll do the ceiling lights. So again, new brush. And again, what we're gonna do is I'm going to actually let me get my flow and my density back up. I'm going to a little bit of there. A little bit there. Same thing here. And then I am going to create a new brush as before. Bump up the temperature, reduce the ex a little bit there, the exposure. I'm going to go bigger, reduce my flow, and create a glow. from the lights like that. So one thing with Lightroom, the backslash will show you what the original photo looked like and what it looks like now. So you can compare any change you've made. So, so far I like it. One thing I wanna do, if you hold, if you uh, press the H key, it turns on the, the, the markers for your uh, brushes so that you can select select them to modify that brush, like I want to modify this one. Then I'm gonna hit H again, and I'm going to add a little bit more to fill in this. Okay, so H again. Oops, I'm gonna click on the brush first. H, click on that one. And I'm gonna add a little bit more glow to this light just to match the other one so now h okay so again we're going to create another brush and now we're going to the the lights here in the kitchen 
So I'm gonna make another brush and now we're gonna go to the lights here in the kitchen. Let's do that and that. So this, the first one, I call it the light bulb. That's the light bulb. And then we're gonna create a new brush. So we're gonna do less flow, a little bit of yellow maybe. Let's see here. And then we're gonna go a little bit bigger and we're going to drag down to sort of give it that feel of the light shining downwards. And what you can do, if you think, you know, if you want more, you can increase the exposure or reduce it. I kind of like it there like that. Let's see if we make it more on the yellow side. No, 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 I don't like the yellow side. So we're gonna go right there. And then again, we're gonna do this again. We have the ceiling lights that we're going to do. Same process every time. Now, oops. Okay, so hold down the space bar so I can zoom in. I'm going to carefully paint where my can lights are again this is the light bulb now these are 50 megapixel images that I took with my Canon 5DS so it takes a second for Lightroom to catch up so there was three there I think there was a couple more back here there we go there's one there's the other one now hold the space bar click Let's make these a little bit more on the yellow side. And then again, new brush. And let's reduce the flow. And we're going to create, drag down, down. Now it looks like a lot, but then I will reduce its strength by coming down with the exposure. And this technique is great if by any chance there's a light bulb that doesn't work and you don't have a new one to replace it and you can just paint in the missing light. Now when I have um, beddings that are white, one of the things that I like to do is I like to whiten them a little bit more. Um, so I, what I do is I create a brush. It's actually the same type of procedure as we did with the, with the lights. But uh, I, tried to, I start out with a neutral temperature and tint. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to brush. Actually, let's see. I'm going to turn on auto mask. Sometimes it helps. So we can go in here and we can really brighten. So I'm waiting for Lightroom to catch up. Here we go. Let's see. Okay. Now you can turn on and off that brush to see the difference. To see the difference just on the brushes. I like that. It really helps make the bed pop. Maybe go more a little bit towards the blue. Yeah, I, I do like that. I think that's that works really well. Now, one thing is I also see these decorative pillows. We have black ones here. So let's put a do a new brush and let's go on negative exposure and kind of paint into those just to help them also get a little bit more stand out a little bit more if you will it almost gives them to me like a cleaner look if we do that if we feel like that's too much we can always oops go back to the brush H it's this brush so you select it and we can increase a little bit the exposure so they're not as dark now there are a couple of things that 
I would also fix here the tags. Let's wait for it. the tags from the comforter and this plug. There was no cover for this wall plug. Lightroom is pretty good at cloning. So let's see here. Maybe we can try to do it with cloning. Let's see how it does for us. Let's turn down the feathering. There we go. Size, let's go a little bit bigger. Now, if you use the forward slash, you can tell Lightroom to pick from other locations. Right now, I picked from here, or you can click H to turn on, and it'll show you where it's picking from. Now, like in this case, I decided, you know what, let's pick from up here. I can manually tell it where I want it to pick. And I'm not sure why, for some strange reason, it's doing that. So let's switch this over to heel. Let's see if heel does a better job. Yes. So I'm happy with that because you won't really be able to see it now. Let's do the same thing on these tags. Let's see. Actually, I'm really happy with that. So I think I'm going to bump up the exposure a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to cool down now. Let's go. Still playing a little bit with the exposure. And one of the things you can also do in Lightroom, and these were shot in RAW, so, and, and that's what I'm editing. You can change here at the bottom under camera calibration, it has different uh, uh, settings that you can play with. Like you can try landscape that usually really makes it vivid, the colors. I actually, I like that. Or you can go to neutral. That's going to mute the color. Portrait. You just cycle through them and sort of see what which one you prefer. And faithful. And standard. To me, it's between standard and landscape. I actually like landscape. The only thing is I'm going to reduce a little bit the vibrance because the landscape setting tends to bump up the vibrance to me. So a little too much. So, but, uh, so here's the difference between before and after. I think there's a significant difference. I think the, the, the picture looks a lot better. Um, Let's see, I'm going to bump up a little bit the contrast. Is that too much? Let's see. Okay, I think we have a finished image here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And you can check out some of my other tutorials at www.robertoserini.com slash tutorials.